is in Nottingham summed up everything that has gone wrong. Welcome to Alcatraz, to the jungle, because that's what the people who live on this estate call it. This is Heist and Green in Nottingham, and there are hundreds of places like it all over the country. I suppose it took about a hundred years for what our ancestors built to turn into slums, and it's taken just ten years for Heist and Green to turn into a modern slum. So why did these new estates deteriorate so badly, so quickly? Well, of course, the architecture didn't help. But the problem wasn't just how they were built. It was about the kind of people that the council put in them. By the end of the 70s, a third of marriages were ending in divorce. And one in 10 children was born out of wedlock. Along with the elderly, single parents and homeless families were among those most in need of council housing. And what reporters discovered in places like Heist and Green was what happened when these vulnerable people were tightly packed together. Earlier this year, Heist and Green, and in particular Valley Walk, became a national byword for juvenile crime and vandalism. Over a period of eight months, a gang of children and teenagers terrified and tormented the old lady who lived here at number 22. Mrs. Linda Bilson, a widow, was living alone. She was robbed and kicked, her furniture was destroyed, and a group of children were even alleged to have urinated on her. It was a desperately depressing story. But here in Heisen Green in 1978, it seemed that for once, something might actually be done. The residents themselves had a plan to revive the sense of community that seemed to have been sucked out of their estate. They wanted to turn their vandalized garages into a sports center and workshops. Well, Christine and Robin Robinson are with me from the Tennis Association. Christine, why do you think the garages and, and what you do with them is important to the future of Ice and Green? Well, we hope it's going to encourage people to come into the flat who actually want to live here people who live there because they've got nowhere else to go. The workshops did get built, and in the end they sustained about 30 businesses. But it was all too little too late, and by the mid-1980s, the council decided that Heist and Green needed a complete rethink. And so this is Heist and Green today. It's a supermarket. In the end, the housing estate lasted barely 20 years. Like so many concrete dreams of the 1960s, it ended up on the wrong side of a wrecking ball. one that gives people a sense of individual space. Nottingham Council had already learned that lesson in 1978 when it started building these new houses, literally next door to Ice and Green. These were the kind of homes that people wanted to live in and given the chance to buy. But the failure of the high-rise housing experiment was hugely damaging in a deeper sense too. It helped to fuel a growing mistrust of government planning and a loss of faith in the supposedly benign bureaucrats who'd taken it upon themselves to manage the lives of millions of people. And that mistrust spread into another battleground of the 1970s, education. series of the 1970s provoked more indignation among adults than Grange Hill, which hit the nation's screens in 1978. This school was the original location of the series. Tucker Jenkins and his mates ran riot in this very playground. <laughs> 